Salutations, crustacean dudes and dudettes. I am Lobster S. Preston Esquire, and today we're going to be reviewing the Charvel San Dimas and asking, is this base as excellent as it looks? Well, let's find out. This, as you all know, is the Charvel San Dimas Pro Mod 4-string bass. These hit the market by storm. Manufactured by Fender, these have bright paint jobs, awesome electronics, and roasted maple necks with a really fast neck profile that's super comfortable and easy to navigate. On top of that, there's little touches like the high mass bridge, glow in the dark side markers. What's there not to love? Well, we'll see about that in a little bit. But how can you really describe this bass? Everything is different, but the same. Things are more moderner than before. Everything is bigger, yet smaller. It's computers. San Dimas High School football rules! <laughs> Seriously though, on paper, this looks like an excellent package. You have DiMarzio PJ pickups that are hum canceling, and a three band preamp paired to a volume and blend control. The volume is a push pull for a preamp bypass, so you can run these pickups passive. However, there is no passive tone control. So it's merely a preamp bypass there. The pickups here are the DiMarzio Model P and Model J pickups. Now, in my preference, I like the area pickups better than the model pickups from DiMarzio. However, in this application, they actually do sound great. And the neck is a 34 inch scale, 20 fret roasted maple. We have a really fast neck profile. This is essentially like a jazz bass nut width but it's very skinny all the way down and it's super easy to navigate. This neck is also graphite reinforced for extra stability, so you know that even though it's a thin neck, it's not gonna go crazy. Now fretting wise, the fret job is excellent. There's no buzz and I can get really low action. I'm not really much of a low action player as I do play kind of hard, and I can actually get this pretty low and keep my aggressive playing style without actually experiencing a ton of buzz. So the fret job is really well done on this. We have a truss rod adjustment wheel at the heel of the neck. Everything looks good. Now you may be asking, hey Lobster, what took you so long to make a review of this bass? This is actually my second San Dimas. I had to return the first one due to a crack in the finish by the neck pocket and the preamp was busted. When you saw me do the unboxing, I actually was running that with the preamp bypass due to some issues I was having with some distortion. It was a very weird issue and this bass does not have that issue. However, is this preamp any good? We'll find out in a little bit. First, let's turn it around real quick. Around back, we see a cream covered control plate to match the pickups. I think that's a really nice touch and a separate battery compartment with a battery door for easy battery swaps, much appreciated. And then we have a standard Fender four screw neck attachment. From a parts perspective, you could probably swap in a Fender neck or Fender body or whatever if you wanted a different finish. I don't see why you would because these all look to be standard Fender sized uh, parts, at least for the four string. I can't speak about the five string. The roasted maple neck looks really nice. It is not over roasted and the grain is really nice as well. Again, I really like the profile of this neck. It's super easy to navigate and it has glow in the dark side markers. A nice touch for a base that's around $900. These are $899 brand new and the five string is $999. Now I know you guys are wondering, what does this base sound like? You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and hit that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. Very nice. 
nice, very nice. Now that, just like my unboxing, was with the preamp bypassed because this preamp is not good. This is not a good pairing. Just, it's not. These are very hot pickups, and this preamp, uh, even with the gain all the way down, definitely gives you a lot of added kick, and it doesn't make this very usable in any other configuration besides, uh, I guess, bypassed. On top of that, there's a lot of noise. A lot of noise. We remember the grounding noise that I mentioned in the unboxing of my first one. Well, here's the preamp engaged, and... It's back. Yeah, this thing is noise city. I opened up the control cavity and the shielding, the shielding paint is uh, not the best. It's really faded in some areas and the application looks rather light. And I'm not sure if this is grounded properly, so I'm gonna be opening this up and doing a separate video on correcting this issue, but we are gonna review this base in its out of the box form. What you heard was the blend centered, so you had both pickups on at full. Let's check out the P pickup soloed. Here's the J pickup. <laughs> yeah, so these pickups by themselves sound fine, but then preamp goes in and you do get a lot of added noise and added kick. And I don't think these pickups need any help with kick. The DiMarzio Model P and Model J pickups are not known for being quiet. They're known for being very powerful pickups. Why do you need a preamp that boosts it like this? It really kind of makes things not great. So here's what both pickups sound like with the preamp centered. The preamp's now engaged. Yeah. Okay, now let's go ahead and check out the P pickup soloed here. Here's the P pickup with the preamp centered. Yeah, every time I lift my hand off that, the strings, it's like, or, or touch the screw here, like, like, come on. Just turn everything down. Here's what that sounds like. Now, while we're on the P pickup, let's just turn the bass up to center, keeping everything else cut, the mids and highs. Okay, so that sounds basically similar to a tone roll off. Um, let's go ahead and add some treble to that now. 
So we just have the mids cut, the treble centered, and the bass centered. pretty much the preamp. Once you start boosting things past center, it gets a little bit hairy. Here's the bass at 50%, the treble at center, mids cut. Now let's center the preamp back up. This wonderful, wonderful preamp. And go to this J pickup. Here's the J pickup with the preamp centered. And let's go ahead and cut everything now, bring everything down all the way. And bring the bass up to center, leaving everything else cut. Wrong knob. There we go. And let's bring the treble up now, leaving the mids cut. And let's bring the mids back and center the pickup selector. So now we have both pickups engaged and the preamp centered. And let's bring everything down. Now let's bring the bass up to center, leaving the mids and the highs cut. Yep, and let's bring the treble up to center, leaving the mids cut. And uh, yeah, <laughs> now I'm just going to go ahead and bypass the preamp. I, I, I hate this preamp pairing with these pickups. These are great pickups. I love DiMarzio pickups and I think the Model P and J pickups are a great set. However, not with this preamp. I think that Fender really dropped the ball here. Look at all the other things that this thing has. It's well balanced. It has a high mass bridge. DiMarzio pickups, alder body, a crazy paint job. You have the roasted maple neck with a great profile. This thing plays great. The preamp just ruins it. It's not just that it 
is a negative point, but it actually detracts from the experience of this bass so much, so much, and I am frustrated by that. Ugh. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and bypass the preamp and let's slap this thing. <laughs> plays great and with the preamp bypassed and both pickups engaged this sounds great too why not just have a volume tone volume tone or even a volume blend tone and like a two band stack or something that you could bypass like this seems like a missed opportunity here they give you everything else and then give you this crap preamp it's awful and it makes me very angry now let's move over to the P pickup and slap it one more time. <laughs> oh man, I'm so frustrated with this preamp. I'm not gonna put drums behind this bass. Shame on you, Fender. Shame on you. So here are my final thoughts on the Charvel Sandemus Pro Mod four string bass. This is like making the most beautiful cake that is affordable and you could bring it home to your family and they made it with sour milk and you're just like, everything was there. All the ingredients were there. But this one thing that they messed up ruins it, and that is this preamp. This preamp is sour milk. Everything else about this base is awesome. I love the paint job on this, and you can also get a nice royal blue, or in the five string you get a Lamborghini green and a red option. But you get awesome pickups, a cool finish, this roasted maple neck with a really nice profile. It's well balanced. With the preamp bypass, it sounds great, but you have no control other than the blend. So like, come on guys. So what am I gonna rate the Charvel Sandemus? Yeah. I'm gonna rate this bass two claws out of five. I'm gonna take care of the issues with this bass, but I shouldn't have to. And this is the second one that had the grounding issue, though this one seems more severe. And I've had other people reach out to me who have purchased this bass and said that they have experienced the same thing and if I had any leads or updates on that. That's messed up and that really aggravates me. Other than the preamp and the shoddy wiring, this is a great platform. I mean, you have a nice PJ set up here. You can replace these. You can also replace the preamp and other stuff. However, this was really marketed as the end all be all like out of the box base from Fender, essentially. I mean, Charvel is owned by Fender and this is using a Fender P base body and a Fender style neck with a Fender headstock. So this is essentially a Fender and they're dropping the ball here. Meanwhile, the prices of the other Mexican-made instruments are going up. These are still at the $899 price tag, and for that, I mean, you're still getting a lot for your money, but this preamp is god-awful. It's terrible. <laughs> so stay tuned for an upcoming video where we fix the noise issue. We're gonna open this thing up and do a full copper shielding job, ground it properly, and see if that makes a difference. We're gonna keep everything the same here, we're gonna show you the noise beforehand, right before I do the mod. We'll show you how to do the mod, and then we'll show you after and see if that fixes it. Also, I have something else that I'm gonna toss into this base that's hopefully gonna make it a bit better. We're gonna be ripping out this preamp and installing an Audair. I've never used an Audair before, and this is one of the Audair Pro Z preamps that has the little Z switch. And this is made for four pots. It has two stacked pots and a flip switch. This has five openings, so we should be a-okay to drop this in without having to mod the body here. Hopefully that will be a big improvement over what we have going on inside there, because I do not like this preamp, as you probably have guessed by now. 
So stay tuned for those videos, and thank you all for watching. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and join our Discord, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about my Charvel Sandimas Pro Mod 4-string bass. And as always, until we groove again.